Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Quick Freeze's Game Room. This is going to be episode 6 of Quick Freeze Versus. Today I'm going to be playing a game based on the very popular 1993 live action TV show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. And this video was actually a request to me by a fellow YouTuber called Renegade Muffin. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers ran for about three seasons, producing over 145 episodes and one feature film. And it was actually based on the 16th installment of a Japanese Super Sentai franchise called Kairoru Sentai Zuranger. And this show actually used footage from that Japanese show. It used footage for the monsters, the Zords, and when the Power Rangers were actually in costume. The scenes with the Power Rangers when they were in their everyday lives were actually reshot with American actors. And these actors not only just acted, but they had to do voiceover acting for the Japanese scenes. So when they were like fighting monsters and you heard, you know, them talk, they had to do voiceover work for those scenes. Now, the original cast when they were announced there was a huge concert controversy over the show saying that the Power Rangers were a little bit racist. And it's kind of funny now, but it was a huge deal back then because the original Black Ranger was played by an African-American actor and the Yellow Ranger was played by an Asian actor. When many people, mostly parents, saw that, they thought the show Power Rangers was very, very racist. And I didn't really see that back in the day, but it was huge. But uh, with an interview with the show's producers, he said basically that the, the casting call and the who would be what color, that was, it was pure coincidence that the black actor happened to be the Black Ranger and the Asian actor just happened to be the Yellow Ranger. So it was pure coincidence and they were not being racist at all. Now the story of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is a lot different from the Japanese Zaru Ranger series. The Zaru Ranger series featured five warriors from an ancient civilization of dinosaur evolved humans that were reawakened into the present day after 170 million years of suspended animation to stop their sworn enemy, Bandora the Witch, who was released from her magic cylinder. Now, Bandora the Witch vowed to make Earth a wasteland because back when ancient dinosaurs were evolved, her child was killed by a tr Tyrannosaurus Rex. So that was basically the story of that show. Now, the Muddy Morphin Power Rangers Bandura the Witch was renamed to Rita Repulsa. The same, since they used the same footage, they used the same actor but with a different voice. But Rita Repulsa, again, simply, she just simply vowed to conquer the nearest planet, which happened to be Earth. Now, the wise and powerful Zordon, with the help of his robot assistant Alpha 5, chose five teenagers with attitude to morph into multicolored superheroes with the powers based of ancient dinosaurs. So both shows were very kind of different but very similar in the same aspect. Okay so there you have it that's a brief history of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and their Japanese counterpart. So let's get started and let's see if I can beat this game Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. Again the same rules apply I am allowing myself 10 continues to beat this game. If I fail to beat this game with that 10 continue limit, then I've failed to beat Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. So again, let's get started and I hope you guys enjoy.
So as soon as you press start, you see the five Power Rangers looking into the sky at an image of the evil Rita Repulsa who plans to conquer the Earth with her army of putties and evil monsters. You are given a choice of the five different Power Rangers. Let's pick the red one because he's the leader. At the start of each stage, you play as the unmorphed Power Ranger. In this case, since we are playing with the red one, we are playing as Jason. And this is basically a simple beat em up where you beat up putties as they come onto the screen until you clear them all out and it says go and you are able to continue on. Now this game uses a very simple control method. You only really use about three buttons in the entire game. You use one to punch or attack, you use another one to jump, and the third button you don't really use until you morph into the Power Ranger. When you reach about halfway through the level, you meet the boss, which is Bones, first introduced in the episode High Five. And then you morph into the Power Ranger, refilling your health and gaining new weapons and new abilities. One of the new weapons is the Power Ranger's unique weapon. In this case, for the Red Ranger, you get his sword. Now, as I mentioned before, the third button is the bomb. When pressed, it destroys every single monster on the screen. Just like the first half of the stage, you simply move to the right collecting different power-ups and fighting different putties. Now that you're a Power Ranger, your attack is a lot more effective because you have a longer reach and you can attack more quickly. And this works great because you'll encounter different variations of putties, such as some putties that have stronger defense, some putties that jump, some putties that have shields, and some putties that will simply throw daggers or knives at you. Keep doing this until you finally reach the boss of the stage, which I already mentioned is Bones. Now he's actually pretty easy, if you just keep on him, slashing your sword at him, and maybe do a few jump kicks at him, you'll dodge his various attacks. When you do enough damage to him, his bones will actually shatter, putting him at a huge disadvantage because he no longer has the use of his arms. Keep hitting him with the same strategy as I mentioned before, and he'll shatter one more time, where all he has is just a floating head. If you stay under him, and jump up every now and then and slash with your sword, he will easily go down. Every time you beat a stage, you go back to the character select screen. This time I think I'll go with the Yellow Ranger. Level 2 is much like the first in the same way, but with more obstacles. Now these can actually hurt you if you get hit by them, but the great thing is, they will hurt enemies if they get hit. Now it's best to use these to your advantage when you're fighting multiple enemies. Now when you die and lose all your energy, you actually go back to the beginning of the stage. This can be kind of frustrating, especially if you're near the end of the stage. Just like the first level, when you reach halfway, you meet the boss. This is Gnarly Gnome, first introduced in the episode, A Matter of Trust. And then you morph into the Yellow Ranger, regaining all your health. The Yellow Ranger fights much like the Red Ranger did, but her weapon is the daggers, which kind of puts her at a disadvantage because her weapon is so short. Now as I mentioned before, when you die and you lose all your energy, you go back to the beginning of the stage. But if you can make it to the boss of the stage, and then you die, you don't go back. And you just restart at the boss battle with all your energy. Being that the Yellow Ranger has such a short weapon, I had a hard time with this boss. And I actually died using up all my lives, using up one of my continues. So I need a Power Ranger with a longer weapon. I figured this time I'd try the Blue Ranger because his weapon is the Lance. The best way I found out how to defeat the Gnarly Gnome is to stand on the middle platform. If he teleports in on the higher platform or on the platform of the same height, just slash at him until he disappears. If he teleports in on the floor, quickly jump out of the way before he swings at you with his fork or shoots his energy ball at you.
When the gnarly gnome takes enough damage, he'll start teleporting around the screen a lot more faster. Why well, I found out the best way to beat him this time is to simply go all the way to the right on the highest platform. Once there, just simply duck and constantly keep swinging your lance. From time to time, he'll teleport up there or teleport within range of your weapon and get hit. A few times, he will teleport on the other side of the screen and he will shoot his sonic boom from his accordion. That's when you want to jump out of the way and quickly get back into position. Do this until he finally is defeated. Next up, I think I'll try the Pink Ranger. Level 3 plays much like the other two levels did, but with more putties and more obstacles. Just keep going through them until you finally meet the boss, which is I Guy from the episode I Guy. Once you meet him, again, you morph into the Pink Ranger, refilling all your energy. Now the Pink Ranger has a huge advantage over all the other Rangers because her weapon is the longest and she can shoot her bow and arrow from afar. The second half of level 3 is a lot more difficult than the first half because you have rising waters, so you have to work around this to defeat all the putties on the screen. Once you defeat all the putties on the screen, then you move on to the next sector. Here, once you make it this far, you must jump from wall to wall, dodging all the flame blasters. You do this much like you did in the Ninja Gaiden series back on the regular Nintendo. When you finally make it up to Agai, you'll realize he's actually one of the easiest bosses in the game. All you really have to do is stand close enough and just keep slashing with your weapon. From time to time, he'll raise up in the air and come crashing down, or he'll shoot his constant laser beams at you. To counter this, you just simply duck and attack. Just like Bones in level 1, Eye Guy will separate into a single flying eye. All you really have to do here is stand under the eye and constantly keep jump kicking him or slashing with your weapon. Do this and he'll go down just like Bones did. For level 4, we'll try the last ranger we haven't tried yet, the Black Ranger. Now you may already notice that the rangers in their unmorphed form will fight much like they would in the TV show. Zack being the hip hop dancer will throw in random dance moves as he fights. Billy being the genius, when he fights he often hides in cowers. Trini will fight in the style of gung ho, while Kimberly will throw in gymnastic moves. And Jason being the martial artist will throw in some powerful kicks and punches. The boss of level 3 is the genie first appeared in the episode Switching Places. The genie has multiple attacks and was just simply too fast for the Black Ranger. And by the time I figured out his attack patterns, my life was so low that I died, making me use up another continue. So the genie moves incredibly fast, so I need a Power Ranger that's equally as fast. All the other rangers have really long weapons, but I think I'm going to have to go with the yellow ranger just because she is the quickest one. Now the best way to fight the genie is, is to simply get as close to him as possible and slash away. He does have various attacks though, such as the daggers. Try to stay under him when he shoots those. The three lightning dragons, if you get to the top of the screen and jump over the tallest ones, you'll be able to dodge those with ease. His last attack is two floating mirrors. Try to get in between the mirrors and slash them whenever is possible. Keep following these strategies and you'll defeat the genie. Level 5 is the last and final stage you play as the Power Rangers. And at this point, that's actually a good thing because the stages really started to get repetitive. Where you play as the unmorphed Power Ranger, you meet the boss, you morph, then play as the Power Ranger that you chose, then you fight the boss. This is the Dark Warrior from the episode The Dark Warrior. And this is actually one of the hardest bosses in the game because I actually fought him with the Blue Ranger, the Red Ranger, the Black Ranger, 
and the Yellow Ranger and died each time. The reason that this boss is so hard, because one of his main attacks is he jumps up in the air and drops bombs on you. What you want to do is avoid these bombs at all costs, because if you get hit by them, it'll take a huge chunk out of your life. But now I get the Pink Ranger for this boss. What you want to do is get in the corner and press up and attack. This will let the Pink Ranger shoot a bow and arrow as the Dark Warrior will continuously jump around the screen like a bullfrog. From time to time, the Dark Warrior will jump above you. This is when he'll throw the bombs down at you. You want to quickly get out of the way and wait for him to come down. When he hits the ground, continuously slash at him until he disappears. Halfway through the battle, the Dark Warrior will get a new weapon, a kunai with chain. Just simply stand on the corner and keep shooting your bow and arrow arm for the strategy really doesn't change. The Dark Warrior will sometimes disappear and reappear with his previous weapon, the sword and bombs. Use the same strategy as before, dodging the bombs and keep slashing at them. Do this and the Dark Warrior will be defeated. With the first five levels completed, the Power Rangers band together, calling upon their Zords. The Sabertooth Tiger, the Triceratop, the Mastodon, the Pterodactyl, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Combining these together form the mighty powerful Megazord. Level 6 is more like a fighting game, such like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, than the beat em up style you've been playing. You play as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord, and you're fighting the evil monster Mutitis from the episode Island of Illusion. Now this guy is actually quite difficult, because you really just want to hack and slash at him, but I advise against that, because I actually died using a 7th continue. Both you and the monster have life gauges on the top and bottom of the screen. The gauge underneath your life is your power meter. The best strategy I find out how to beat this guy is to simply block until your power meter is full. When it is full, unleash your power and this will do a heavy amount of damage to the monster. When you strike the final blow, the Megazord automatically jumps back and powers up its power sword, delivering the final blow. Level 7 is just like level 6, where it's a fighting game. Here you fight Cyclopsis from the episode Doomsday. Cyclopsis is a much more difficult opponent than Mutitis is, where he has different shields and different attacks. Your best strategy again is to simply block all of his attacks and wait till your power meter is full. When it is full, unleash your power doing up heavy amounts of damage to Cyclopsis. When you finally defeat Cyclopsis, the Megazord will jump back powering up its sword. But instead of killing the monster, Cyclopsis will block the attack powering up its second form. This form is a lot more difficult from this first form and I actually died using my 8th continue. Now even though the second form is really really difficult, again, simply try to block all of his attacks and wait for your power to gain to full. But our lives were so evenly matched, I got very hectic at the end of the battle, and I simply won out of pure luck. But again, the Megazord will jump back, powering up its power sword, and finally killing Cyclopsis. After saving the world, the Power Rangers go back to Ernie's juice bar and celebrate. Okay, there you have it. I was able to beat Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo with only using 8 continues. My final thoughts about this game? It was a good, fun, simple beat-em-up game. It's fun for anyone, fun for who loves the show, or just fun for just general people who love beat-em-ups. The game was a little easy at the beginning, but around level 5, that's when it kind of like got a little harder and a little frustrating. But all in all, it's a good game. I do recommend it. My only gripe about this game is at the end of each level, I would love to like 
be involved with more Megazord battles. Because when in the show, the monsters grew very, very tall, and that's when the Power Rangers jumped in the Megazord. So I kind of would like to see more Megazord levels at the end of each stage when you defeat the boss as the Power Ranger. My only other complaint, which is not really a huge deal, is the lack of the Green Ranger. Anyway, that is episode 6 of Quick Freeze Versus. Again, I was able to beat a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with only using 8 continues. At the end of this video, I'm going to be posting a list of all the superhero games that I own. So if you guys see a game on that list and you guys want to see a video about that game, please request by commenting below. I do have a few requests already that I'm already working on, so it may take a while before I get to that game you guys request. Because I want to get to the ones that are already requested first. So, but the last thing I just want to say, if you guys enjoyed my video cool please subscribe again i really appreciate it and with that uh that's it just uh i'm quick freeze from quick freeze game room and i'm here to bring gamers together one game at a time